So I originally didn't plan on doing a video of this Taro T2D gimbal, but I had so many problems, so much frustration. I lost a week in just getting this thing configured that I wanted to share just what I learned, some gotchas, things to look out for when you're setting this guy up. If you're not aware, this is probably one of the most affordable gimbals that you can get for the GoPro Hero 3. And while it is relatively cheap, good design and everything, it can be a beast to get configured. Okay, so quickly, let me just show you kind of the end result of how this thing behaves. So we're powered up. Everything is calibrated and level. Now let me go ahead and move this hexa around a little bit. So you can see I'm moving it pretty aggressively. Pitching forward and back. So you can see this guy's just super locked on. I'm actually quite impressed with the controller board and hopefully when it's all said and done I can save you a bit of time. Now I know there are probably some of you that had no problems. I expected this thing to work great out of the box but it had all sorts of jitters. So I'm going to start diving into some of the issues that I ran into as well as just some of the issues that I'm aware of from reading different forums online. We're all familiar with the infamous Chinese instructions. This actually comes with one sheet. It's double sided. It's fairly straightforward to do the assembly. It probably took me about an hour, an hour and a half to get everything put together. But of course nowhere on the sheet does it mention anything about software configuration. So I'm going to post all the links below but make sure that you go to the Taro RC site and download the brushless gimbal configuration software. The first major hurdle I ran into is this comes with a USB to serial cable. The other end plugs into your gimbal board. And given that the brushless gimbal software only runs on a PC, I had to download the Windows drivers and we all know how much fun dealing with Windows drivers can be. So uh, this is the prolific website. There's a driver that you need to install for this cable to work. Connection to the gimbal board is pretty straightforward. You have a port on each side. This is actually the left side of the board if the quad were facing forward where this GoPro is and that's where you actually adjust your gains. And this is the port on the right side of the board which is actually for configuring the number of poles on each of your motors as well as the power for each, both your tilt and your roll motors. First thing that I did with the Tiro gimbal was update the firmware. So in the software there's an open firmware button and as part of the download you're going to get a firmware, it's a BGSF file, so this is version 1.5. I'm going to go ahead and open it. Now the main trick is my gimbal is currently disconnected, so when you do this you don't want to have any power on your gimbal until the last step. So I've opened that file, now I'm going to open the COM port, which in this case is COM17, your port will obviously vary. So I'm going to click that, it says the port's open successfully. Now I'm going to click Start Upgrade. Now it's saying Starting Firmware Upgrade Procedure, please wait. And here's what I'll do next. I'm going to actually go ahead and power the gimbal. And you'll see at the bottom right the progress as the firmware gets loaded onto the board. Now it says Firmware Upgraded Successfully. To me that was pretty counterintuitive. I tried to do all this with the gimbal powered up. But once again you want to do all these steps then power it up last. Now with the firmware upgraded, let me show you where I probably spent about 90% of my time. Now I highly recommend you guys try to use this default configuration for the gain. So there's this load config button and as part of this download there's a config directory and you have the GoPro uh, configuration file. So we're going to open that. Okay, with that open you can see a bunch of default gains, max and min, angles. And I'll have to say these were pretty close to what I needed but I uh, missed a few steps which really caused a lot of frustration and hassle. So with those loaded I went ahead and clicked right settings to flash. Then I positioned the GoPro pretty much to where I wanted it so it's just straight forward. And now with it pointed straight forward I went ahead and clicked calibrate sensors. And you can see the orientation of this camera which makes no sense to me. You know you see the horizon here and this thing is pointed I guess up towards the sky. So I didn't really understand what was going on with this in the first place. So with the GoPro pointed straight ahead, the sensors calibrated. I proceed to click motor on which will enable the motors. 
and then you see the GoPro just really disoriented. There's a lot of just jittering. Fill it on this and twitching going on. And you can see it really start to get out of hand. After that, I'll go ahead and click motor off, disable the motors and get everything untangled. The first thing I made sure of is that my motor leads were not reversed. I read there have been several guys that have had the roll and the tilt leads reversed, which can lead to some pretty erratic behavior. So always check that. What I actually did was pull each one out and configure it in isolation just to make sure that I had my tilt and roll plugged in correctly. So after I did that, I actually pulled the IMU cover off the back just to make sure that nothing was loose. I've read about a few guys that have had a loose sensor in there that caused all sorts of weird behavior. So where do you look to next? Of course, your gains. Now, let me caution everyone that's watching that I wasn't sure what to expect when I first plugged this thing in. And I'll tell you that if you use the default gains, assuming that there's no additional payload on your gimbal or anything that's throwing it out of whack, the default gain should be pretty close. You shouldn't see any crazy shakes or jitters like I was getting. And the manual actually recommends, you know, pretty much putting these all to zero. I think to one, put your total gain up to 100 and just start dragging around to where uh, jitters start to happen and then you bring it back down. But I just felt that wasn't a good process for me because once again, my gimbal was all over the place. I read about some motor reverse settings related to uh, some potential problems, but those definitely didn't do the trick for me. So let me go ahead and load the default config again. So the next thing I tried, the actual motor settings. So I had to move the plug from the gimbal side of the board over to the motor side. And now with our cable plugged into the motor side of the board, I can actually do the motor configuration. So I'll load that. And then once again, we need to open the COM port. Now I'm actually showing you the values that I'm using for my setup, which are not too far off the default. So poles, you wanna definitely keep those at 14 for both motors. And then for my roll power, I have 50. And then for my tilt power, I have 35. But those really weren't the source of my problem. Let me get to what was the magic formula for me. So if you recall, I did the sensor calibration with the GoPro pointed straight forward. And once again, that yields this behavior when I turn the motors on. I decided to play with some different settings for calibration. So what I actually did through a series of tests, I pointed this straight up and did the sensor calibration with it pointed straight up. And you can see that the actual 3D display shows it pointed straight up in the air. And I went ahead and enabled the motors. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. And you can see that we're pointed straight ahead. If I move it around, we'll see what you saw at the beginning of the video that this gimbal has really no vibrations at all. And it's just locked straight ahead. I'm working with pretty much the default gains, but it's important that you guys know that you should expect the gimbal to behave somewhat properly. If it's jittering or going crazy all over the place, then something's definitely off. All right, guys, I know that was a ton of information, but I felt that I had to share it with a lot of time spent in the garage, staying up late, dorking around with this thing. I definitely hope this points you in the right direction if you're working with this gimbal. And I'll be following up soon with a video that shows how you can control the tilt of the gimbal with a knob on the Tyrannus and your X8R receiver. So I really hope this was useful. If you guys have any tips or suggestions related to configuration, please share them below so that we can all benefit. And until next time, thanks for watching.